Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and talked about mapping, specifically from the network layer to our domain layer here. If you missed it, I recommend you checking it out uh, so that you're up to speed. And in this episode here, we're going to talk about the disposable effect and how we can actually use it to basically get a hook into different lifecycle events here. So as we get started, smash the like button to help me out, subscribe if you are brand new, and let's just dive right in. So Compose is great, Compose is extremely wonderful here. We have this one quote app that kind of uh, runs this entire screen that we're looking at. But one of the issues, or I guess something that may be a little bit more difficult to, to see, is we, we lose the visibility into the different lifecycle events that we're accustomed to as Android developers, right? The on create, the on resume, the on destroy, all that good stuff that we might want to do certain things during. So in this case here, uh, inside of our composable, we're actually making a network call here, right? We're telling the view model to fetch the quote of the day. That's great because we need the data to display, but uh, you know, the way this whole framework works and whatnot, we don't really have a lot of control over when our composables, or at least how frequently our composables get recomposed and called again. So this could trigger many, many network calls, especially if um, you know, the result of this call then triggers a data change that this composable needs and it redraws itself and it fires off another uh, network call in the process. So we can find ourselves in an infinite loop here, not a very good idea. And so this is where the disposable effect comes into play. Taking a look at the documentation here, I'll link it in the description of the video. We can see here our disposable effect. We can give it a key. In this case, we're caring for a lifecycle owner and basically we can go ahead and you know do something inside of this block that it gives us that lives in a different life cycle than the composable itself, if that makes sense. So we're actually gonna do something relatively similar here. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this. We'll paste it in and we'll kind of chat about it. And so after taking that example from the documentation here, pasting it in, we have this result after we cleaned up some imports and removed some comments here. So we can go ahead and pass our lifecycle owner in. We can get a reference to the current one here by just you know defaulting it to that, but basically looking at who is the owner of this composable. In our case, this is being uh, owned or created in our activity, specifically our on create and whatnot. So we're kind of, uh, we're looking into that lifecycle owner there. Now taking a look at our uh, disposable effect here, we'll see that we are passing in our lifecycle owner here. This is actually the key. And then what happens here in this uh, block will run anytime this key changes, any unique value. So from our perspective here, we're not going to see changes here inside of this lifecycle owner, uh, you know, unless major things happen inside of the application, right? The application gets started or create, uh, created or destroyed, sorry. And in our case, that's about it because we're looking at the activity. But the interesting part here happens inside of this block. So we can go ahead and create an observer, specifically a lifecycle event observer. And then we can basically listen for any of the events that get passed in. So there's a nicer way to do this. We'll clean this up in a little bit, but we can get a, a reference to the different events that this lifecycle owner fires. And then we can look into the on start, on stop, on resume, etc. Inside of the rest of the block here, we can go ahead and attach this observer to the lifecycle of the lifecycle owner. It's pretty much boilerplate code. And then here, if we don't have this on dispose here, we'll notice that there's actually an error. And that's because we see here there's a type mismatch. This block here, this disposable effect block, well, specifically this lambda here, this little code that was running, is actually supposed to return something at the moment it's returning unit. Instead, it should be uh, returning this disposable effect result. And that's why we have this on dispose function called within it, because we can see here that that actually returns the disposable effect result. And this is basically a self cleaning listener. So when this lifecycle owner changes, uh, the on dispose section of this entire block here will be invoked. And in that case, we are just going to remove the observer. So we want to keep this in mind because we don't want to prevent memory leaks, or sorry, we want to prevent memory leaks. We don't want to create memory leaks, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to add in a return at disposable effects. So that tooltip goes away and it's a little bit more verbose what we're doing. So uh, the reason that we kind of uh, added this in is because, again, we were creating that network call here inside of our one quote app composable that we know that that's a really bad practice as we discussed earlier in the video. So instead, we kind of want to listen to maybe on start or even in the case of like on resume, right, or something like that where we would want to maybe refresh data 
and, and do something like that. So our observer here gives us that flexibility. I'm not a massive fan of the if statement because that can get pretty large here. So um, we can simply use a when statement and we can say when the event is going to be, let's go with on start here and we're gonna do something. And in the event that it is uh, on resume, you can see here we have a whole bunch of them, right? These match up to all of those, you know, functions that we're used to seeing inside of fragments and activities. Uh, what do we need on resume here? We can go ahead and, and execute this block, right? And then else we can maybe just log something. So quite simply here, in the other case, we can just log the name of that event here. We're gonna go ahead and delete this really quickly. And now we have two blocks of code here that we can execute in the on start and on resume of our lifecycle owners. So that's now tethered exactly to our activity. What we're gonna do now is we're actually going to rip this out into a function and you'll see why in a second. So I'm just gonna pull that out here. I'm gonna put it up here for the time being. I'm gonna, of course, make it a composable because we need to have it a composable uh, in order to call it within our one quote app. We will name this perform on lifecycle. And then we're simply just going to paste all of our code in there. We're gonna to have to fill in the gaps here real quick. And I guess the only gap was our lifecycle owner. But now here we see on start, on resume. So what we can do here is we can actually define those quite simply like that, right? So we have our on start, we have our on resume, both of these are defined as functions that return nothing. And then we're just defaulting them to like an empty uh, lambda here. So they're not all required. The caller of this, uh, you know, this function can actually decide what it wants to do. And then simply in here, we're just going to clean this up, we're going to call on start here. And then we're going to call on resume here. And now we have this observer attached to this lifecycle, uh, calling these particular callbacks in the different you know methods uh, when they fire off. And we're cleaning things up here appropriately in our on dispose. We're not doing anything uh, you know that's going to harm us from a memory leak perspective. So we're basically ready to use that. And so the concept here, the final product here, is just going to be able to call perform on lifecycle. Our lifecycle owner is the lifecycle owner. And then let's say in our case, we care for on start and inside of this Lambda, we're simply going to then uh, make that function call to the view model, which will kick off our network call. And so just cleaning this up here, we have our perform on life cycle, just looking to clean up the params here on start, we're calling our view model on resume, we kind of have it stubbed out here, do something, do whatever we want to do. And then quite simply here, if we ever need to extend this uh, function, at all, you know, we can always add in like the on create here, or maybe an on destroy or something like that, right, to kind of give us some more flexibility. Of course, we're going to have to then add to this when statement here to listen for those events. Uh, but once we do, it's very straightforward, right? It's a, it's a very simple bit of logic that we have to add in here. And uh, that's about it. I think this is yelling at me here because it should be capitalized. And by doing so, we broke that. But otherwise, we can very easily leave it like that. We go ahead and rerun things here. And as the emulator comes back up, we saw that, you know, everything works as normal. This network call here has been, uh, you know, fired off. This is the quote of the day. And more, most, most interesting, excuse me, is, uh, you know, we have in our logs here, we have the observer log for the on create lifecycle event that we are just not listening for or just not doing anything else for, right? So we saw the on create happened, then we saw our, uh, well, I guess we didn't see it, but we know that our on start is then happening and then on resume is being fired here. So hopefully you learned something here. Hopefully this perform on lifecycle is pretty self-explanatory. Kind of worry about all of the disposing effects and all that kind of stuff, the cleanup and any event lifecycle you know, events that we care for here, um, we can just, you know, expand this function as we see fit. But that's about it, folks. Hopefully this can help you out. If it did, um, if you learned something new, I'd really appreciate uh, a subscription if you're new, a like or a comment if you're a returning viewer, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.